were Norlander, looking north from Clydeside or west from Aberdeen, the Scottish Highlands rise like a great barrier, mile upon mile of mountain and moorland, of heather, peat bog and scree. In the northwest corner of this area, in Southernshire, the scenery changes. Bare, desolate hills tower above an almost treeless landscape, scored and pitied by a thousand lochs and tarns. Northwest Scotland, home to whiskey, deer, men in kilts, and midges. Sitting in the shadow of the mountains, the small village of Shieldig hugs the shores of Loch Torridon. It is here in this small community that every year in mid-June, the Celt man comes to town to listen to bagpipes, do some Cayley dancing, feed the jellyfish and buy midge repellent. It's, it kind of brings a kind of air of excitement, you know, it's um, this kind of the build up to it and, you know, I mean, you feel it, you know, I mean, athletes are obviously feeling that, but I think that everybody around feels it as well and it's a nice, it's a nice thing. When I first came, they thought we were all nuts crazy. We felt like rock stars the first couple of years, but then I kind of, I think they kind of got used to us crazy people invading their beautiful town uh, and now they've really embraced it. It's always a pleasure coming back either to the pub or to old John living down the road or uh, even at the nannies, get your cup of coffee and your carrot cake. Um, my first memory of Keltman was um, on the school bus on the way to school and we were all chatting about it and we just thought this is just absolutely bonkers. So it was a very amazing race. I uh, didn't expect it to be so beautiful and such a big, big challenge. Everyone just, I think, gets together because it's special to have such a big race in this community. As a fisherman, I probably spend most of the time trying to stay out of the water and these guys are wanting to jump in the water, so yeah, I scratch my head. <laughs> I can't even imagine, to tell you the truth. I mean, it's such a small little community and then to have all of these athletes from all over the place I, I, I gotta think we quadruple the population of Shield Egg when we show up <laughs> and uh, for them to allow us to do this in their community is is just amazing. Yeah, that's, I, I get walking up the hills on a nice day with a packed lunch and sitting at the top and enjoying the views I don't really get running over after you've cycled hundreds of miles and swam in the sea, so, yeah. Uh, to be honest, I think they're just all crazy and they're all going to get eaten by jellyfish. Not too bad, probably not as bad as last year, but there is a few of the red ones, so I'll keep an eye out for them. Um, the purple ones don't sting you. There's plenty of them, but you usually see the tentacles on the ropes when you're hauling up your gear, but you haven't seen that much this year, so you might be lucky. spend the whole day without hearing a single thing, apart from seagulls squawking. No, but a little bit, yeah. I hope she uh, have, has a good swim and not, and really are not freezing too much, uh, because if she's, she gets really, really cold when it's cold water. Quarter to six, six o'clock, the first swimmers will be coming in. Um, there's big flames, there's the big heavy pipers, and <laughs> there's locals out cheering these people on. Um, it's at the early hours of the morning, um, they're out of their beds, and they just... It's hard to explain how the locals grasp the race, it's, it's incredible. There's no comparison to our West Coast Langestine. What about the 
She usually looks like that. <laughs> Very frozen. <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm a pretty calm guy, so I don't stress for nothing, really. It's, uh, the only thing uh, that concerns me is that when somebody like Magdalena goes out bike riding in a condition like that, really cold, and uh, I don't want her to take wrong decisions on downhills. So you can see that she has crashed a couple of times, uh, times pretty hard. Uh, in Norseman actually once, and uh, so I hope she has this mining control so so but this is cool we are gonna sit and sit in a car for the next seven hours it's really easy <laughs> so uh, the goal is to get to the t2 t2a uh, before those 11 hours so she can do the high mount the high route and uh, so that's uh, that that's the main goal today. Come on, see you later, man. We can do it, Aaron Kuku. Vraiment, c'est c'est super. Les gens sont très accueillants. On est allé visiter une école à Cheldeg. Vraiment très gentil. Et heureusement qu'on est venu ici pour savoir ce que c'est que la gentillesse. Bon les bras. Hey, hey, hey. Now she's smiling. All the other support crews are wishing you well along the way, and if you need help, they're helping you. Uh, you kind of get into a, a bit of a rhythm with people that are going round at the same sort of pace with you. And so as people are stopping to support their own uh, athlete, then they're seeing you at regular times and you get loads of encouragement from them, and it's just special. It is, yeah. It is, uh, as you saw uh, earlier on, that I can't find my crew. Could you please help me? And all of a sudden, two or three persons, yeah, okay, of course we can help. And um, it's that's the way it goes, actually. Oh, definitely. It's just the whole family thing. I mean, I it's just little things like um, I had a couple of mechanicals in the race. I dro literally just dropped my chain, but every time I stopped, everybody stopped who was behind me. Every other supporter stopped. Keeping calm. Don't stress and good communication. Uh, it's her race, period. Uh, whatever she wants. Uh, she has to be a T2 at latest 10 to 2 and a pretty fast switch off to at two o'clock then she had then, then there is a possibility uh, so she had to increase a little bit speed I think. I mean, a lot more technical than I than I thought it it, it would have been. Um, I was kind of naively thought it mostly would be on sort of at least paths, but certainly coming down the scree slope and and crossing the boulder fields is really yeah. I'd have your wits about you. End of May into June, you can still get fresh snow on the tops. Um, you can. Ex experience gale force winds, uh, severe wind chill 12 months of the year. Um, tomorrow uh, the forecast is looking quite favourable um, but all it takes is just uh, a little spanner in the works and um, it can be pretty epic up there. I think you can really win or lose this race on the run, definitely. Uh, there's a path, 
but it's a path that you just have to kind of instinctively follow. Uh, it's there and you kind of find it as you go through. I think um, the toughness of the run itself is uh, a great experience, but obviously getting to the top of the mountain and seeing uh, Jimmy with the bagpipes is always uh, special because then you know everything is downhill afterwards. To me, it doesn't matter what colour of t-shirt you finish with. It's an incredible journey. Um, and to, to cross the finish line is, yeah, it's quite emotional, really. Um, I think just because racing here, um, where I was brought up, and being able to do something that if you speak to somebody normally and just general day-to-day -day chat and you tell them what the race involves, they just look at you as if you're crazy. I struggled a bit today and uh, the win wasn't obvious but I did what I could and, and uh, yeah we pulled off, I won. <laughs> David here, congratulations, fantastic. Well done. You had a beer over here. How are you doing? Oh, well done. A bit tired. I mean, I was really pleased with how I raced yesterday and whether I'd come first or whether I'd come last. I, it was the whole experience, the race experience, being part of something bigger that makes this race. It's not, like, I'm, I wasn't, you're not chasing the time, you're not chasing the podium, you're just being part of something else that, that makes the race. I think that's, yeah, that's what makes it special. And, yeah, it's just, it really warms your heart, actually, how much the community are involved and uh, how much people get into the spirit of Keltman and they become, they become an extended family and uh, they want to come back and see each other and support each other and uh, just enjoy and share the experience together. Um, so yeah, it's, the challenge is amazing, but the, the feeling of the event, the family feeling of the event is special. I mean, I, you know, I do feel a real sense of belonging here, and um, I feel really grateful for that, because I think you know, some people just never experience that, of kind of actually feeling that like they really belong somewhere. I don't think anyone knew what it was going to do for the area. Um, you know, Paul Stewart and John could have chosen anywhere else in Scotland but they chose this remote community on the northwest. Um, the villages are small. Um, and the, the community welcomed the race with open arms. It's not, you get the, the Keltman community, where you, you have all the racers, the organizers, that's one family. And then you have the other family of supporters. And on race day, they all come together. A uh, family around the race is, really important and it what it's it's what makes the race what it is people just are so proud of this race and i tell everyone about it because it's just it's amazing that in such a small community we have such a, a big race it's typical highland hospitality um and this may sound biased but you won't get that anywhere else um and it's you you speak to foreign athletes that come year after year and what really springs to mind with me, and it's quite special to hear, is they say they've come home. Uh, an amazing influence on this race, on Onaz and a great friend. We'd like to celebrate uh, Chris's life uh, and his contribution to this race and the x -Tri family. So we'd very much like you to join us now in 30 seconds of applause to celebrate Chris's amazing life.